Now, inshallah, we throw the floor open for the question answer session and we will take the first question. The first question is from Ibrahim Asif from Lahore, Pakistan. Assalamu alaikum, respected Zakir bhai. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi We as Muslims are thankful to you for your wonderful service to Islam, especially for broadcasting Dr. Israr Ahmed's lecture for the Urdu and Hindi audience. His lectures on Quran and global affairs are now largely being viewed these days. What are your views about Dr. Israr Ahmed's Quranic thought and his vision on global affairs? We know that you hosted him in India. What did you find in his personality when you met him? And finally, do you agree with his ideology of politico-social economic system that every Muslim must do struggle to establish the Islamic system of government? Jazakallah khairan. A similar question is asked by another brother by the name of Asif from Pakistan. What are your views about Dr. Israr Ahmed? How did you find him when you met him? This question has been asked to be several times since the time I have launched this program as Dr. Zakir Naik regarding my views and how did I spend time with Sheikh Ahmed Didad and Dr. Israr Ahmed. But I knew that the answer was going to be long, so I was trying to delay it because when I give long answers, the number of questions in the program session becomes less. So basically, the question asked by our brothers from Pakistan is, what are my views regarding Dr. Israel Ahmed? And what do I think about his teachings on the glorious Quran and on the political, social, economic system? As far as many of you may be aware, that the person who inspired me the first and who made me change from a doctor of a body to a doctor of soul is none other than Sheikh Ahmed Didad and may Allah grant him Jannah. The other personality that affected my life to a great extent besides Sheikh Ahmed Didad, it is Dr. Israr Ahmed. Sheikh Ahmed Didad was the first person when I met him in 1987. I was inspired by him and because of him, I left my profession and became a full-time Dai. The other personality which was instrumental in making me leave my profession and become a full-time Dai was Dr. Israr Ahmed. Regarding the question that I met him and what are my views regarding him, the first time I met Dr. Israr Ahmed was in the year 1991 when I travelled from India to Pakistan. I have only been to Pakistan once that is before I started giving public lectures. That was in 1991. And my main reason to travel to Pakistan was to meet Dr. Israr Ahmed and to see his organization. After I was inspired by Sheikh Ahmed Didad, I started watching many other speakers in English and also in Urdu. And my second most favorite speaker that I started watching video cassettes after Sheikh Ahmed Didad was Dr. Israr Ahmed. And after I watched many of his video cassettes, I had the desire to meet him. So in 1991, I traveled from Bombay to Lahore. And when I met him in 1991, I was impressed by his simplicity. MashaAllah, such a great personality. And I was touched by his simplicity. His organization, that is Quran Academy, when I went to Lahore, it is massive, it is huge, it has got many buildings and when I went to his office, his office was so simple and according to me, he's a stalwart, mashallah. The two speakers that I feel can move the audience, unlike other Islamic speakers, it is Sheikh Ahmed Didad and Dr. Israr Ahmed. Even today, when I watch the programs of Dr. Israr Ahmed and Sheikh Ahmed Didad, the moment I start hearing them, it is difficult to stop the videos. And even when we hear a short clip, we are moved by the way they speak. Both of them, Alhamdulillah, they are excellent orators. And I feel in English language, one of the best orators that we have in the Islamic field is Sheikh Ahmed Didad. And in the Urdu language, one of the best orators that I know of, it is Dr. Israr Ahmed. Alhamdulillah. 
they acquire excellence. When I met him personally, he asked me that, why have you come to Pakistan? So I told him, number one is to meet you, Dr. Saab, and to see your organization. And Alhamdulillah, then he asked me that, what am I doing? So I told him, I've just passed my MBBS. I'm doing my internship, and I intend doing my post-graduation, most probably in surgery. And I told him that I've been inspired by Sheikh Ahmed Didad, and I would like to be a dai and a doctor both. And my intention was to be a part-time dai. So he said that, do you want to do as a dai part-time? Um, I said, no, I would like to do both, maybe equal. Maybe later on, after I finish my master's, I would like to do both equally. Equally good in both, I would like to be. So, Dr. Isra Ahmed replied that beta, that is, beta means son in Urdu. He said, son, I tried to excel in both. Even I'm a medical doctor, and as you may be aware that Dr. Isra Ahmed, the doctor in front of his name is of a medical doctor, not a PhD doctor like me. He told, for seven years, I did medical practice, and I tried to do both. Then I realized that if you want to excel, you have to choose one. You cannot excel in both. So my son, you'll have to decide whether you want to be an excellent doctor or excellent guy. And that statement of Dr. Israel Ahmed really changed my future. Initially, as you know, that I was going to do my post-graduation, so I requested my parents that I start this organization, Islamic Research Foundation. Now, because it is internship, I'm more free, so I'm giving more time, more than 50% of my time. And once I start doing my post-graduation, when you're doing a master's in the medical field, you have to be a resident doctor and you have to stay at the hospital. Maybe you can come home for a few hours a week. So I thought when I get that, half a day free or some hours free every week, I will spend two hours for Dawa in the organization every week. So my initial plan was when we launched the Islamic Research Foundation, because it was internship, I was doing more than 50% of my time. I had the time. I requested my parents that once I start doing my master's, I will give two hours every week. After meeting Dr. Israr Ahmed and hearing from his past experience, it is very important that when we hear the stalwarts, the scholars, and those who Allah has given Niyama, we have to learn from them. And when I returned back home, then I decided that I have to choose between the two. I chose to become a doctor because I wanted to serve humanity. And after meeting Sheikh Ahmed Dida and Dr. Isra Ahmed, I realized that there is a better profession to serve humanity, and that is the profession of a dai, as Allah says in the Quran in Surah Fusilat. Chapter number 41, verse number 33. Allah says, وَمَنْ أَحَسَنُ قَالَ مِمَّنْ ضَعِلَ اللَّهِ وَعَمِلُ صَالِحًا وَقَالَ إِنَّ نِمْنِ الْمُسْلِمِينَ Who is better in speech than one who invites to the way of thy Lord, who works righteousness and says that I'm a Muslim. So then I decided later on, before I finished my internship, that I would not do my master's. Because when I do my master's in medicine, I would be more involved in the medical profession, and that would give me less time for the hour. So I started practicing in my father's clinic, and we had a diagnostic center. So I told my parents, I want to do 50-50 both, not two hours a week, dawa, and do 50% for dawa and 50% medical practice. And both my parents, they agreed with whatever I said. During internship, I was doing more than 50% of my time. When I started at the diagnostic center and in the medical clinic, Though I said I'll give 50% for my medical practice, even that time I'll give more than 50% for my dawah. And then I told my parents, I want to give 75% for dawah and 25% for medical practice. They said, no problem. And after a couple of years, I told them that I want to give full time for dawah. And Alhamdulillah, both my parents were very welcoming. They were very supportive, including my brother, including my sisters. Alhamdulillah. So that's how my journey from a doctor of body to a doctor of soul in a span of just a couple of years. Not that it was very long. And then Alhamdulillah, 
I was giving full time for Dawa. When I met Dr. Israr Ahmed in 1991, he told me one thing, beta, son, if you want to be a successful Dai, see to it that you make your needs and requirements to the bare minimum. So I asked him that, why? What my requirements got to do with becoming a Dai? He told me that if you make your requirements and your need to the bare minimal, you will not be dependent on this. So that when inshallah, later on, you become effective, no one will be able to twist your arm. Because the need is less, so you will not be tempted to give fatwas or give statements which are not correct. Since your needs are less, you will not be bothered about the worldly things will be more bothered about the Akhirah. And this point of Dr. Israr Ahmed, that make your needs bare minimal, really stuck into my mind and I made it a policy. Alhamdulillah, by the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, my father, my parents were very well off. Alhamdulillah. So in the initial stages of Dawah, they were fully supporting me. And my brother told me that I can continue and there is no problem at all. I need not worry about my livelihood. When I married in 1993, that is two years after meeting Dr. Isra Ahmed and passing my MBBS, I told my wife that I can promise you minimum 4,000 rupees a month. 4,000 rupees at that time, I think the rate was about somewhere close to 40 rupees, so it was $100. I told my wife that if you want to marry me, don't marry me because I'm a doctor or because I belong to a rich family, I can promise you 4,000 rupees a month. And that time my wife, she had passed a master's, she was doing MPhil and she was teaching in a college and her salary was much more than 4,000. I promised a 4,000 minimum, but Alhamdulillah, I gave a little bit more. So this was my view. And this was the impact of Dr. Isra Rahman. And then later on, mashallah, when I started doing my own business, spending a few hours every week or maybe one or two days in a month during holidays, Allah blessed me. And mashallah, the earning capacity was much more than my parents, much more than my brother. And I stole millions of dollars a year. So much so that I could even afford a Rolls Royce. But the guidance of Dr. Isra Ahmed that make your life simple was stuck in my mind. That's the reason I thought to it that the car I owned was not a very glamorous car. I remember we had a second hand sumo and in the year 2000 and I think 10 it was somewhere close to that. When I decided to buy a car, we had a Shura in the family. Maximum I thought I could buy was a Toyota Innova. That was in 2010, if I'm not mistaken. Because more than that would not suit my personality. I personally thought it would be extravagant. Though the amount I used to earn, Alhamdulillah, I could even afford a Rolls Royce. At that time, the guidance of Dr. Isra Ahmed was there in my mind. And till today, more than 10 years have passed, I had owned a Toyota Innova. When I came to Malaysia, I said I want to maintain that standard. And where I lived in Bombay, I lived in a three-bedroom apartment. And when my guests used to come, some of my friends who are billionaires, when they used to come to my house, they used to get shocked. I said, what is the problem? It's such a small apartment. I used to call Marshall. It's very big. Me, my wife, and three children. In Bombay, it was about 800 square feet. That's carpet area. It was big, it was so small. For me, it was big. Even in Malaysia, I'm staying in a three bedroom apartment. The carpet would be somewhere 1,000 square feet. The built up area is 1,200 square feet. And I feel it is big. Not that I cannot afford. In Malaysia, the apartments are very cheap, maybe one tenth the cost of Bombay. So if I have to purchase cost wise, I could have taken a 10 times bigger apartment. The cost of Bombay apartments are much higher. But I stuck to that advice of Dr. Israr Ahmed that make your requirement the bare minimum. Even today I feel 
Mashallah, the apartment I'm living in is very comfortable for me and my wife and my three children. It's very big, others we call it small. So my lifestyle, Alhamdulillah, was mainly based on that one advice of Dr. Israr Ahmed. And that has done wonders to me, especially when I had to do Hijrah from India to Malaysia and all the things changed. We did not find any difficulty because we never let any luxury creep into our life. So the life was very good, Alhamdulillah. In fact, the life in Malaysia is much happier, much more comfortable than what it was in India, even after all these difficulties. So this advice of Dr. Isra Ahmed to make your life simple, I have even given to my children. That see to it that your requirements, your daily living requirements is bare minimal. And in Bombay too, the monthly expenditure of my personal family was very low. And even here, as I mentioned, in Bombay it was close to $500. Even here, me and my wife living per month is only 2000 ringgit, which is about $500. Yes, there are other expenses of Dawa and traveling. That's different. That's a large amount. We pay our own tickets. We stay in the hotel ourselves. That comes under Dawa expenses. And when I met Dr. Isra Ahmed, and I told him that I want to purchase 100% all your video tapes that you have. He said, why? What are you going to do with it? I said, we are making a library which is going to be the largest video library in the world and I want to watch as many video cassettes of yours. So we picked up somewhere close to 150, 200 cassettes from his Lahore center. After a few days, I went to the Karachi center and we picked up another 150, 200 cassettes from Karachi center. That was 1991. Then two years later, I went to Chicago and picked up all the video cassettes. Then I went to his center in New York. I picked up all the video cassettes. So finally, when I told him I have several hundreds of video tapes, he told me, you have the largest collection of mine under one roof. So we had the largest collection of Dr. Isra Ahmed's video cassettes under one roof, more than his own center. So his cassettes were divided in different centers. I collected all his English cassettes, all his video cassettes, and we made it open to the public library. And then we had the largest collection of video cassettes in the world, which were more than 5,000, of which I think four, 500 were only of Dr. Isra Ahmed. And later on, we invited Dr. Isra Ahmed to Bombay for a lecture tour. And he being a Pakistani, to have a public lecture of a Pakistan in India, you know, it's difficult. So Alhamdulillah, we used our political contacts. We got the visa, a special visa to give lectures. And he came to India in 2004, if I'm not mistaken. That is about two years before the launch of the Peace TV English. And Alhamdulillah, he stayed for a couple of weeks and Alhamdulillah, I was always with him most of the time that he was awake. I was there in our service. He stayed in our apartment and we shifted to the parents' apartment so that we could give the full apartment to him. And his simplicity was, mashallah, striking. And I observed him closely. How did he live his life, mashallah, with simplicity? And certain things I found, though I was very young, and I observed certain things and I asked him some personal questions also. I won't go into the details. I just asked him and I told him that this particular act that you're doing, it is not according to the Hanafi school of thought. So he said, yes, better. My parents are Hanafi. So generally I follow the Hanafi ruling. But when I do research and when I come to know that there is difference of opinion and if the opinion of any other Imam is correct, I follow that. I base my following on Quran and Sunnah. But when I don't do research, because my parents are Hanafi, I follow the Hanafi fiqh. But if I do research on any particular topic, I follow that which is asked for Quran and Sunnah after my research. And that point also was very important for me. And Alhamdulillah, his simplicity was striking. And when we called him, mashallah, we had his program in Bombay in a large open ground where he was reluctant. He said, how can I give a lecture in open ground? I said, we're expecting a large audience. So no auditorium has this capacity. 
the largest auditorium in Bombay is only 3,000 capacity and we're expecting more than 10,000 people. So finally agreed, but I told him, don't worry, inshallah, the microphone system would be excellent and you will not have a problem. He was wondering that maybe he won't be able to speak in the open ground. And alhamdulillah, the program was very successful. We had all 10 days in one venue in the YMC open ground where we had more than 10,000 audience, mashallah, for all the 10 days, alhamdulillah. It was a very successful program. And at that time, we used whatever ability we had, because at that time also we were very small as compared to later on when we started the Peace TV. To the best of ability that time we used the best of technology, the best of cameras at that time, which is nothing compared to later on when we started Peace TV. And till today, Alhamdulillah, the best recording of Dr. Isfar Ahmed that he has done in his life is when he came to Bombay and when we recorded the public programs and even according to his son, I'm yet, mashallah, close to a son, Brother Asif Hamid, who handles the media. And those programs are yet, mashallah, in terms of technical aspects. And those programs were one of our main attractions on the Peace TV Urdu. I can speak for us together on whether it be Sheikh Ahmed Dida or Dr. Isar Ahmed. I can speak us together, but this is a question and answer session. I'll just mention one of the points that the question posed, that what are my views regarding the lectures of Dr. Israel Ahmed and about his teachings of the glorious Quran and particularly the political socio-economic system and should we Muslims be involved in establishing an Islamic government. As I told you that as orator, he was par excellence. He is, mashallah, one of the best Urdu orators that I know, that I've heard in my life. Alhamdulillah. His royalty power, his modulation, Alhamdulillah. His Urdu is a little bit high. Otherwise, Alhamdulillah. In terms what I was attracted, the Dr. Isra Ahmed, his speech is mainly, I would say, broadly, it can be classified into three types. Of course, we are given on various topics. Imagine we have more than 500 video cassettes of his each of average about three hours. So imagine 1,500 hours. His speeches mainly are about how to improve oneself individually. Secondly, that is the society and third is the political socio-economic system or establishing the Islamic government broadly into three types. At that time when I met Dr. Israel Ahmed, that is more than 15 years back, at that time I was mainly hearing his lectures which were talking about one's own self, about Tawheed, about Aksam e Shirk, about Nifaq. Oh, these topics were fantastic and about how can we implement, how can we improve the society and so on and so forth. Regarding his lectures on politics, I did not really pay much attention to that because I am a person who was away from politics and even now I am away from politics. So basically, I did not really watch many of his lectures on politics. I heard very few. And because that was in my field and his lectures were many, I heard the other lectures and I was impressed. Now lately, when I hear his speeches talking about what's happening in the world global scenario, it is phenomenal. I would say that the foresight that Dr. Israr Ahmed had regarding the political scenario, particularly regarding Islam, is Alhamdulillah. It is notable. And very few people had that foresight. Imagine in the 1990s, I met him in 91, and if you hear his speeches of 92, 93, 94, at that time, he was talking about how the Hindutva would take over India. If you hear his speeches in the late 90s or the mid 90s, he spoke that time when there was no scope. People didn't think that BGP would rule India. At that time, he said, wait till these people come, they are very organized, he spoke about RSS, he spoke about the Hindutva agenda, they will take over India, then they will go and take over other countries and the foresight that he had is phenomenal. And now when we hear, we are shocked. He is talking about the Jewish lobby, talking about Israel, how are the Muslim countries behaving, how they should behave. Now when we hear, now because after I have left India, I am more exposed to the global situation. 
of Islam than when I was in India. I was aware of the global system, but now I'm more involved and I'm more aware of the global situation. And today, when we heard the speeches of Dr. Istar Ahmed, which are given in mid 90s and late 90s, it is phenomenal. The foresight that he had, his knowledge on the deen, on the Quran, and his examples, mashallah, the tafsir of his on the Quran, it is par excellence. And after he left India, I told him personally that, can you do me a favor? He said, what favor? Why don't you record your program with a better camera? So he said, beta, I'm not so much into this field. This is not my cup of tea. My thing is to give lectures. So then, mashallah, at that time, I think it was in 2000, we gifted him high definition cameras and told him that you should record on these cameras. We'll be very thankful. And because of that, he gave a new series of tafsir, tafsir al-Quran, saying that because Dr. Zakir Naik suggested, I'm recording again on a better format. And because of that, mashallah, now today, we have his programs on a better format. And alhamdulillah, his son Asif Hamid, who is in charge of the media, he saw to it that he kept on upgrading. And that's the reason when we started showing the programs of Dr. Isra Rehmat, before he came to Bombay, we used to show on the cable network. And we told him we are showing on the cable TV, there are hundreds of thousands of people watching. So if you have a better recording, you'll have better impact and better reach and more thawab. And when he came to India, that time we had no plans of Peach TV Urdu at all. Our Peach TV network was launched two years later and Urdu was launched in 2009. That is more than five years after I left. Once Peach TV Urdu was launched, I requested Dr. Isra Rahman that it's difficult for him to come back to India again because of the political situation between India and Pakistan. So I told him that I will arrange your programs to be recorded in Egypt. So he said, beta, son, Egypt, I will not feel at home. Hardly there will be any Pakistanis. How will I give lecture? I like audience in front of me. So then first time I didn't agree, then I saw to it. I did my survey. I contacted some Pakistanis and I told him, inshallah, when you give your speech in a studio, it will be a big studio. There will be at least 50 to 100 Pakistanis in the studio who you will be addressing to. So you will not feel fish out of water. So finally he agreed and we planned that inshallah we will have the recording. I think it was the year 2010 if I'm not mistaken. Yes, 2010. It was in the month of May that we had planned that we will call him in Egypt and he'll stay for one month. But Allah has his own plans. It was planned six months to eight months in advance that he's going to come. But two months before he could come to, I think one month or two months before he could come to Egypt, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called him to himself and he expired and we did not have Dr. Isra any longer. So it was a loss for the Ummah and a loss for me especially and a loss even for the PhD of Urdu. But we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may he grant him Jannah, Jannat al-Firdaus in the company of the beloved Prophet Muhammad His foresight was exceptional regarding do I agree with his view that there should be an establishment of the Islamic system in the world. Anyone who has the basic knowledge of the deen, but natural. If you have to follow Islam on the whole, then we have to follow Islam completely. You can't just follow one part of Islam. So what he spoke about the economic system, like it should be an interest free economy, I agree with it. The social system, I agree with it. The political system, Khilafat, I agree with it. And that's what is mentioned in the glorious Quran. If you read the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran in no less than three different places. In Surah Tawbah chapter number 9 verse number 33. In Surah Fatah chapter number 48 verse number 28. And Surah Saf chapter number 61 verse number 9. Allah says, هُوَ الَّذِي أَرْسَلَ رَسُولُهُ بِالْلُّذَى وَالْدِينِ الْحَقِّ لِيُذْهِرَ عَلَى الدِّينِ كُلِّهِ That Allah has sent his messenger with guidance and the religion of truth so that it will prevail over all the other religions, over all the other isms. Whether it be Krishanism, Hinduism, Buddhism, Judaism, Socialism, whether it be Communism, Atheism, Islam is destined to supersede all, Kulle, master them all. And Allah ends the verse by saying, Walev Qariyal Mushikun, however much the Mushik don't like it, in two places. And one place Allah says, 
وقفا بالله شيدا ان ان في ذا الله وتنس نو ذس ووز اوف ذا قران سيز ذات اسلام ويل بريفيل اوفر ذا فول وورلد اند وين وي ريد ذا صحيح حديث وين وي ريد ذا علامه الصح ذا ساينز اوف ذا ار اند اون ماي فيس بوك اي هاف جست كومبليتد ذا ميجر ساينز ذا ماينر ساينز وور ذير ماينر ساينز ذات اولريدي اكورد مور ذان 40 minor signs not yet occurred more than 40 both put together approximately 87 i've given and major signs are 10 i just recently finished all the 10 major signs and now i'm giving a summary of all these signs and in these signs it says that inshallah isa alayhi salam will come imam mahdi will come and we muslims will rule the full world for 7 years and when we rule this world we'll be following the islamic nizam whether you like it or not whether the mushrik like it or not the full world would be ruled there will be imam mahdi there will be salih salam and that would be the best rule in the full world for 7 years with peace and justice so this is the prophecy of a beloved prophet it is mentioned in the hadith allah has given in the quran and then the hadith says that after 7 years of rule there will be sweet wind that will come and will put to death all the believers every moment even if he goes in the mountain that wind will come and they will peacefully die after that the qiyamah would come the sun would rise from the place of setting rise from the west there will be a fire which will gather all the people towards the place of gathering and that would be the end of the world for more details you can watch my facebook post So, but naturally, inshallah, whatever Doctor Israr Ahmed said, it will surely going to happen. It's given in the Quran, it's given in the Hadith that finally the Muslim will rule the world, and that will be the best rule with peace and with prosperity. This was in brief regarding my views about Doctor Israr Ahmed. Otherwise, I could speak for hours together. And may Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala grant him Jannat Firdaus. May He grant him a place in Jannah. close to the ambiya close to muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and close to the khulafa rashidin and the sahaba amen